Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message on discovering the root cause of dysfunctional programming, on discovering the root cause of dysfunctional programming. And this particular message for anyone who is a psychologist, a teacher, an educator, a leader, or simply one who is observing others, you may want to take heed because we are going to look at the spiritual realm. I'm not getting into, of course, man-made philosophies and doctrines, nor am I quoting from anyone's manual book or teaching. But what I am doing is giving you things based on what the spirit of the Lord, who knows us better than anyone else, is giving me. He told me to take a look at what I had looked at years ago, the types of programming media programming to be more specifically. Many of you all are well aware that we do take a look at adverse childhood events when discussing all sorts of issues with people. We also take a look at what trauma they have experienced. But what you're going to have to also look at, though, is that media programming, something that a lot of people just simply do not see the significance of it. Sometimes the root cause isn't in what we believe it's in. But if I got something going on inside my mind and it is something based on repeated programming that I've watched, such as television programming, educational programming, parental programming, and any other kind of programming, that is going to Block me from the healing that I need. I'm looking at the dysfunctional media programming where the woman, she's taking care of children all by herself. She ditched the man and the series is running back in the 1980s, one day at a time, which was actually some reruns that I seen. I'm looking at Alice. Alice was a show where the waitress was a single mom and she worked for a hard-nosed boss, Mel. I'm looking at some of the other programming that's out there and I'm comparing it to what I thought my household should look like. Reruns of Please Don't Eat the Daisies. Leave it to Beaver. Cosby Show comes along, closest thing that I could identify with when it came to my household, minus visits to see grandma in the projects. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. We never saw the Cosby children go in to visit the extended relatives in their impoverished communities. But then it's kind of hard to identify with programming on television in your reality when programming on television seems so quite simplistic, easygoing, and how come the real world isn't like this? My programming, the Hulk and other superheroes, Marvel Comics and DC Comics and reading comic books, my programming, being around individuals who enjoyed watching boxing for hours and others who enjoyed watching football for hours, aggressive, violent sports. My programming, looking at Clint Eastwood movies, movies with Steven Seagal. And then they wonder why you got a violent side, why you got a dark side. Why is it that you're the type of individual that can go from hot to cold in a matter of seconds? My programming, it wasn't always about what the parents, the relatives, and later on in-laws said. It wasn't always about what I experienced at the workplace, but it was what I did with my free time before Internet. We watch TV, people. Some of you all, when you listen to what I told you, it brought back some good memories. Others, not so much. Because you start thinking about who all was in the room when you were watching some of those shows. And then you start thinking about some of those sad episodes. 
different strokes, even further back. Jim, the cartoon. Care Bears. Smurfs. He-Man. G.I. Joe and Batman. Coming home from school. Coming home from school and watching Rhapsody. Programming. Programming. There were many game shows before cable came along. Many game shows that were on. And back in those days, the TV went off about, what, 11 o'clock? Some of you all remember. And there wasn't no all-night TV watching unless you wanted to look at a bunch of strips of color and a beep kind of sound or some static. People went home. Wasn't no round-the-clock television going on. But the programming wasn't always good, right? That's the whole point of even bringing up those shows because some of you all, you can think about those things and say, mm, that wasn't necessarily a good program. Or this one, it had some, some good ideas, some good thoughts at the end, but then we found out about the characters and we found out later on the type of lives that those people, those actors lived. Definitely didn't reflect the actors and actresses' portrayal on those screens. But it wasn't just about television programming. When you're sitting down and you're talking with these people and they're telling you about their programming that they watch, what they grew up with. I can remember when cable first hit and I was looking at Alfred Hitchcock and I was looking at Ray Bradbury. And some of those other shows that I can't recall the titles, but I had to get away from the TV at some point. And then there was the radio. There were cassettes. There were old 8-tracks. There were 45s and 33s sitting around listening to music for hours and hours and hours. And when I looked at the sleeves of the albums, because the sleeve was what covered the album, and then what covered the sleeve and the album was the cover, when I pulled out the sleeve, every now and again, you would see the lyrics of what the singer was singing about. I was around a lot of people who listened to R&B, so there was the Stephanie Mills and the Angela Bofield. And then, of course, there was Whitney Houston and some others, many, many others, actually. And everybody was talking about heartbreak and cheating. And people were talking about being in love and then falling out of love and surrounded by so much. And then when you didn't listen to music and you were watching TV for those who were readers and I was one you read books lots and lots of books and I like to read fiction and I used to look at some of the books that my aunt was reading Agatha Christie was big as a child some of the stories of Judy Bloom and then V.C. Andrews, one popular book was Flowers in the Attic. Influences, my friends, influences. There was the dysfunction within the dysfunction. And somehow we get programmed in ways that we don't necessarily acknowledge or remember. But then something comes along and triggers programming, faulty programming. Dysfunction will trigger dysfunction. And then the next thing you know, you're walking around and you're acting as if you are one of those characters. Things seem to be so familiar. It's almost as if you are living multiple lifestyles of multiple different families that you were influenced by. You may have had an opinion on this, but then turned around and had another opinion when something traumatic happens or maybe no opinion at all because your brain shuts down for a while and then 
You find yourself wanting to escape your reality and back to the old programming you go. Some of you all who watch the Westerns. It's a great way to escape, isn't it? Looking at the men staring at the fire. Riding the horses, going across the plains. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I watched Wild Wild West and I wanted guns. And I got me some play guns that looked very real. Before they capped guns off with the orange at the tip. They looked very real. And they were metal, die-cast metal guns. Programming. But what if you were that one that had watched so much programming, such as a lot of scary movies, and no, you didn't kill anybody or hang them up or strip their skin off or nothing like that, but there was something on the inside that was troubling you, and you never associated it with thousands and thousands of hours of watching scary movies. For a long time, I never, ever wanted a big house because after I watch movies like Poltergeist <laughs> and other movies where there was hauntings in homes, I was like, I don't want a big home. <laughs> but what if God had called me to a big home? Well, I pretty much knocked that out because of fear. Stay with me because now we're going to look at how your emotions are tied to the dysfunctional programming. You watch enough of a program or listen to enough media or what have you. It will start to influence your mind in such a way where you find yourself taking what you've learned, what you've been influenced by and applying it to who you are. Using that to describe your feelings, using what you have been exposed to, to share your thoughts, your interests, mimicking the behaviors of others, recreating an atmosphere based on what you grew up with. So if you wanted to leave it to Beaver Lifestyle and you watched hours of it, your goal was to have a leave it to Beaver type of family. And for some people, that's just what they did. But then... There are those episodes that were never written, but they rise up in reality and some people fall apart. They snap. That episode never would have shown up in Leave it to Beaver, but here it is. And I don't like it. And because this is not the way I wanted it, I'm going to leave this and start a new Leave it to Beaver with someone else and then a new one. I always wanted to go out west. I'm going to go. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be living off the land. They made it look so easy. They made it look so easy. Grizzly Adams, <laughs> some of you all, you know. He was this man who was out there living on the land. Had a relationship with nature. Was cool with the bears. But then things happen, needs change, and you start to get away from this programming of this fantasy world, and then reality kicks in. And some people don't do so well when reality kicks in because they realize, oh, this is tearing up my fantasy world. This is causing all sorts of confusion. If I'm not one that's supposed to be helping other people, I've got to look at all areas of how they've been programmed and not just childhood. I've got to be that one that sits down and interviews all their influences and what they had hoped was going to happen in their life. And even if and even if it gives some people some peace of mind by saying, well, you do have the power to create, but just don't lose sight of reality. You can do just that. You can pull out the positive programming that they received and use that to heal the individual who's broken hearted from the dysfunctional programming that was never really meant to be. And then on top of that, you got to take it to a next level and see how what they are after or what they're trying to achieve through their healing process or through all of their dysfunctional breakdown, how it aligns with God's will for their lives. But you're not going to be able to do it if you don't acknowledge God. 
if you yourself are not a believer. People are trying to heal folks, counsel folks, teach folks, advise folks, but they're not even believers. How are you going to be able to penetrate someone spiritually if you don't even acknowledge the spirit who created them and you? How are you going to be able to free someone up out of their enslavement mentally, physically, and spiritually if you're not willing to go to the one true God who may be showing you or <laughs> even though you're not going to him, maybe showing you some visions, some things that you might not even understand that's in and around them. Why is it that when I get in our presence, I keep thinking about this show from back in the 1970s? Because maybe if you open up your mouth, you might find out that that show from the 1970s is what has her in bondage. And if we want to get to the root cause of the demonic that's keeping this person in a place of darkness rather than of light, let's deal with what she saw. Lord Jesus, in that show back in the 1970s that impacted her, that was like a blueprint on her mind. I repeatedly saw some of those detective shows where a woman was either raped or there was an attempted rape. And you know what that did to my mind? Being so young, it made me think that I guess it's okay and it's all right to give in to a man. And then when the time came where I was involved in an abusive relationship because it's interesting how some of that dysfunctional program will lead you into making decisions. The decisions that you make are very similar to characters that you were exposed to and then those characters end up acting like the very characters that were the bad guys in the movies. Oh Jesus, I'm saying something to somebody that your life has been one big movie. Some folks who even decided to become psychologists and teachers and educators. They were influenced by movies. They were influenced by what they listened to. They were influenced by parental programming that said that I want you to make something of yourself and I want you to be this, that, and the other. And others, well, they just happen to have an interest or they looked at some benefit or what have you. And media programming, parental programming, and no other programming had anything to do with it other than the fact that I want to make some money. And there's a good opportunity. And, oh, I got a scholarship studying this, that, and the other, what have you. But our influences have a lot to do with why some of us remain enslaved. You won't give up that show that you like to watch over and over again. Nowadays, a lot of these modern shows, there are no life lessons. There's just a bunch of drama on top of drama. So you go to bed with that. That leaves an imprint on your mind. Now you're going out here. You get around some folks that make you feel comfortable. And then if you connect the dots, you find out that you're connecting with those characters that you've been watching on television. Or you're desiring those characters. Some men, they'll watch hours and hours of some of these shows that are typically directed toward women. But they'll watch them because, hey, there's some beautiful women on there. And then they'll go out here in the real world expecting some of the women to act like or look like what they spent hours and hours watching. As we very well know in the real world, most women are not walking around with lots of makeup on their face having their hair done perfectly like on television every single day. And we know that a lot of women are wearing things, even on those shows, that kind of tuck some stuff in to make their bodies look a certain way. Or others will get all sorts of surgeries or what have you. And then when they're disrobed and you look at where the markings are and some of the things that's going on, wow, it blows a man's <laughs> little fantasy world up. But the television showed me this and the television showed me that some men were drawn to, dare we say it, loco type of women, crazy women, because of the crazy shows that they were watching. And it seemed fun and it seemed OK and all right when it was on television. But when you are living with that crazy woman, when you are dealing with that crazy woman, <laughs> she can affect you in ways that may last for the rest of your life if you don't get any healing. God says, I want to take the media programming off. I want to take the parental programming off. I want to take the dysfunctional programming that is not uplifting you. That's not taking you to where you need to be. 
God is saying that I am using the psychologists and the psychiatrists and others to expose some things about you so that you can get the healing. Some people, they want to fight up against the parent who says, honey, you're going a little bit crazy when you're sitting up there watching hours and hours of them shows. You need to do something else. Some people get very upset when you say you need to change your choice in music because that is not uplifting your spirit. If anything, every time you listen to that artist, something is different about you and it's not good. I need for you to stop being around that group of people, honey, because I'm telling you, all they're going to do is send you straight to hell. And some folks, they don't recognize it. They don't recognize these influences. And that is why this message is here today to cause you to sit down and think about once again how media programming is affecting you. Hours and hours of watching the news. Now you're anticipating nothing but negative, bad. Uh huh. Here we go again. You're anticipating gossip in your day to day life. Because you're watching the gossip shows. Well, what's the juice now? Oh, well, the boss said this, that, yeah. Huh, what? They carry the reality shows into the workplace environment. And then some folks wonder why people don't like them. Why they no longer are the favorite. Why they are uh, on their way out. You can't bring reality show type of television into a workplace environment and expect the real world to respond to you like the reality show. You might get some things that's similar, but at the end of the day, people know when folks is acting, when they're pretending. People know when dysfunctional folk are just being manipulated, exploited, which a lot of that is going on with those reality shows. Psychologists have even attested to that because it's good for ratings. To put somebody who is going through all sorts of mental issues because they're going to bring a personality that most people don't have to the show and you're going to watch it. Imagine what this does to children. Some of you all putting children in front of the TV and they're watching hours and hours of Disney. You know what Disney program did for me? Disney program, Disney programming when I was a child. Made me want so bad to be able to do some magical things with my eyes. I don't know why. Eyes, of all things. but And so I would do little things like try to stare really long. <laughs> and see if something would move. Or I wanted to be able to just do something where I could block out people. Especially when they upset me. Disney programming now, magic. Wanting to take human capabilities to a whole nother level. And some people, they still got Disney programming. They got what some would say is called princess programming. And that, I wish it would go away. I really would. Because you got too many of these little girls who are naive and gullible and they are caught up in princess programming, anticipating a future prince. And that prince turns out not to be what they had in mind, but they're so caught up in being treated like a princess that they'll take whatever after a while. Somebody sooner or later is going to treat me like the princess that I am. It's a very self-absorbed type of programming. It's a programming where everybody worships me, adores me. It's a narcissism type of programming. And year after year, people put their kids in front of Disney programming. And then, of course, there are the disrespectful shows that uh, are on Disney. And what I be mean by that is, is that they have the children being very disrespectful toward one another and most of all toward adults. Adults don't run too much of anything on those shows. They rarely ever put their foot down. The kids are running the adults. So the child comes away from the television and expects to run mom just like the character on some of those shows runs her mom. Sometimes there is no adult presence whatsoever. So you got kids running their own world. And you look at that for hours and hours as a child, you're going to want to run your own world. Free of adults. I want to date. I want to go out. I want to have a good time. I want to run up and down the street and skip around and just live life accordingly. 
I want to do what I want when I want to do it. And so a child is going to look for any type of holes in that relationship with a parent or lack thereof that they can be able to crawl through and get their desires met, even if they go against the household rules. You got more and more drama showing up on television and more and more young people are being influenced and then they become older like us and then they end up having all sorts of issues and then they want somebody to help them and that person may need some help themselves and now you got dysfunctional folk trying to help dysfunctional folk and everybody's ignoring the spirit of God and that's not what you want. Acknowledging the Spirit of God, that Holy Spirit, comes with acceptance of Jesus Christ, comes with the Holy Spirit indwelling, comes with studying of the scriptures and being around the like-minded who can touch and agree with you, praying with you, giving you the encouragement to go out there and fight the good fight. Opening up a portal, if you will, for the Lord to speak to you. You pray, the Lord answers, you go to the Lord and tell him about whoever it is that you're trying to help, and the Lord shows you things, and like I said, don't overlook the media programming that has enslaved people mentally, physically, and spiritually, which hinders them from healing because nobody wanted to acknowledge the fact that I had been dramatized not by the people that were around me in some challenging situations, mindset kind of blown <laughs> to smithereens at times, but it was by what I saw over and over again on the television. And then you combine that with the dysfunctional reality and the dysfunctional programming, and now you got a walking, <laughs> some folks would say, nut job. But when you go through the process of healing, you get to see the pieces of the puzzle put together. There are shows out there that uh, pretty much encourage paranoia. People suspecting that this one's following me, this one's stalking me, this one is here, this one's there. And that will show up in one's reality if you have a mental illness. Because if you throw in mental illness... On top of the dysfunctional programming from media and elsewhere, now you got this person who is struggling with the mental illness, possibly having to take medications, but still programming his or herself through the programs that they're watching and listening to. Now, this message is not one of those one size fits all type of scenarios, but this is one of bringing awareness to some things that some people may not have thought about in their counseling, may not have even attempted to address just yet. But you just might. Once again, if you are a believer and you're receiving some type of signs, visions, wonders about some things that make no sense to you, open up your mouth and say, does this mean something to you? And then tell them what you're seeing. I'm seeing this show. It's a show about blah, blah, blah. Does that mean something to you? Oh, I'm hearing, I'm hearing this dialogue in my head. I'm going to share it with you. And you wrote it down and then you read it. Oh, that's from so-and-so show from back in the day when I was a kid. I keep hearing this music and there's this artist. Are you familiar with it? The initials are and the title of the song is. That's God. My friend, that's God that's given you a key to unlock another area of someone's mindset that needs to be healed. They may even start to talk about some things that seem a bit odd. And you say, that sounds like a movie. That sounds like a song or something like that. And then you do some research and you find out that that is where a lot of their programming is coming from that's hindering their healing. So I know this message is a little bit different, a little bit confusing for some, but for those who counsel people, advise people, teach, educate, what have you, it means something to you. And that's what God has given me to give you all the best 
in your counseling sessions with folks and your teaching and in future programs that you might come up with, not to enslave folks, but to set them free. Blessings to you. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube Interim Enterprise 7. Also, we do welcome donations, and we thank you in advance for those of you all who plan to give. And if you would like to reach out to me, you can send me an email at NicoleMcGuire at gmail.com.